today we're going to um, start using different kinds of selections. If you recall on one of the first assignments as a test, they selected, and the one that I did it was the coin, and if you did the one in CS4, it was the headlamp using the elliptical selection tool or marquee tool. <coughs> this one, um, this exercise covers a whole variety of ways of selecting objects and each tool will work but sometimes better than others and so I'm going to go ahead and open from the bridge that exercise and we'll look at the before and the after <coughs> and it should look depending on it doesn't really matter whether you have the book from CS4 or CS3 it should look similar so I'm going to look in my personal folder I'm going to look in the public folder and if I look at Photoshop CS3 lessons, if I recall, yep, should be lesson four. So this is the final version, and here we have all of the parts. And this is really a common way to work in Photoshop. So I'll open both. <coughs> and I probably won't do it exactly like the book, but pretty close. So this is what it's supposed to look like when it's done. Just a bunch of ve excuse me, vegetables on a cutting board <coughs> with a label. And you'll see that we have all of its parts that we need to select. Come on, there we go. And make it a part of it, okay? So that we can put it together as a group. Now something you may or may not know <coughs> is that if I take the selection tool, and we're going to start with the first one here, rectangular, it's right beneath the, the black, this is the move tool, the one with a black arrow and the plus or crosshair here, okay? And I click and I drag around <coughs> in marquee around this cutting board. <coughs> If I move my mouse inside the marquee and I click and I drag, it only moves the marquee and nothing else. Does that make sense? Anything that is contained within that marquee is what will be affected if I choose to paint, if I choose to change the levels, if I choose to change color balance or whatever, it's only that which is inside the marquee that will be affected. Now, on the other hand, if I choose to use the Move tool, watch what happens. <coughs> notice, also, notice first how the icon changes. Notice that there is the black arrow with a little pair of scissors underneath it. That means that what, I'm, what I do now will wrench it from its background and move it. <coughs> if you notice over here, in my toolbox, in the bottom left-hand corner, where you have a black as foreground. On mine, I happen to have a blue background color. If I click on the background color, and let's change it to red, for example, make it a nice bright red, you don't see the background. But if I were to paint with a background color, it would paint with red. But this is where the background becomes apparent. If I choose to move now and wrench that away, see how the red shows up? If I had left the background white, you would not see a change. But also notice what happens. When I move that, move that, it also took the pixels that I have selected around it. It just doesn't take the cutting board. It takes all the pixels within that marquee. And notice how when I move it across, and it will cover up. I'm on the same layer, but it will cover up other elements because it's a floating part now. Now what I need to do in order to get it back is I need to use my history and just click back to the open. Because I had used up my, my one undo. Okay. So what they want us to do is they want, want us to select each of these items and they want us to move them in place over here. So I'm going to move this over like so so that we can see the before and the after. 
I mean, I should probably even close it out a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. Um, again, I don't know. I, I'm probably not going to do it in the same order, but I don't know that it matters. Um, what, and the reason I say that is not because I don't want you to follow the instructions in the book. But what I do want you to be able to do when you're done with each of these exercises, and it doesn't hurt to do them again, not to have me check it off, but to do it for yourself so that when you're done, you can look at the exercise like this and without looking at the book, pretty much do it and not have to look at the book to, you may not know the exact settings like in the last exercise where you're supposed to change a brush size, you know, they tell you to use a specific brush size or a specific color setting or something like that. That's not important because you're not going to have those anyway. I mean, you're going to do that by kind of a, a you're going to look and there'll be a, a more of a touchy-feely approach when you're do, doing your own. But, you know, can you do these without following step by step in the book? So the first thing that I would want to do while we're doing this is I'm going to take <coughs> and I'm going to select the um, head of lettuce here or whatever this is. Does that look like a head of lettuce? There's a variety of ways that you can do this. There's the hard way, there's the hard way, and there's the easy way. Okay. Um, one of the ways that you could do it that's the hard way is you could select and all of these tools up here, the first group, are our selection tools. We could use the lasso tool, and I could come in here, and I could click and drag, and notice that my mouse, as I move around the edge, I'm following the outside, and it's pretty crude, and it looks horrible. I can tell right now, you know, I mean, it's almost, it's drawing with a pencil around this, and we could follow the entire perimeter of the head of lettuce, and before you know it, I'm just going to skip around here. Okay, you go back to where you started, you have a selection, and now you switch to the, to the move tool, and now I can move the whole thing over. But you'll see, even where I was pretty accurate, it looks pretty crude. So I'm going to undo, bring it back, and I'm going to hit Command D for deselect. To deselect, you either move outside and click with one of the selection tools, or if I undo that, the way I prefer to do it is hit Command or Apple D for deselect. There are variations of the lasso tool. There's the polygon lasso tool and there's the magnetic lasso tool. Those wouldn't be any better. Okay. Um, the rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool don't help me either because the head of lettuce is not an ellipse, it is not a rectangle, so it's not even close. So I have some other options in here. I have the quick selection tool and I have the magic wand tool. Now, the magic wand tool is useful for a lot of things. If I click in here, notice that it starts to select a good number of pixels and actually the tolerance by default should be set to 32. So it's a radius of 32 pixels and what it does is it takes in that radius a color sampling and wherever you click, it finds similar colors within that radius, and it will select everything else. You, to add to that selection, I can hold down the shift key and click. And notice I'm selecting a good number of them, but it's still, nah, it's not doing a very good job. So that tool doesn't work. But the tools that do work best in, is the quick selection tool. <coughs> and this is a great tool. And it was introduced in this version, CS3. And when I click and I drag, notice that it knows what pixels I want. How does it know that? I don't know. But whoever programmed this did a super job. I just did a little click and a little drag, and it selected all of them. It will not do that always, but it did a very good job in this instance. That's one way of working, but let's assume for the moment that it didn't work. What other way could I use? And this is where you will want to think, begin to think a little differently. Sometimes you'll want to select like we did before. Remember with the first exercise, we wanted to affect the background. But what we did, we selected the coin, and then we did an inverse to select the background. 
So what I'm going to do is, is along those lines, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a rectangular marquee tool, and I'm going to click and drag around the head of lettuce. So I have the, the area surrounding the head of lettuce and the head of lettuce selected. I can also use a combination of tools. I don't have to use just one. I can also select the magic wand tool. Now the magic wand tool, while it doesn't work really well for shapes that are multicolored, it works super well for solid colors or col colors that have very little change in tonality. So think about it. I have my head of lettuce and my background color selected. What I want to do is eliminate the background surrounding the head of lettuce, don't I? So what I can do is I, not only can I add to the selection, but I can subtract from the selection using multiple tools. So what I'm going to do is hold down the Option key, and that allows me to subtract from the selection. And all I have to do with the magic wand is click on the background, and voila. So it removed, the magic wand removed all of those white pixels, and now I have just the head of lettuce. So you might be saying to yourself, well, why wouldn't you just use the quick selection tool? Because it did happen to work in this instance, but what if it didn't? Then here is another way of, of working. It just, it's, it, it's a couple of steps, but it's a smart way to work. Now, I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit in this exercise, but there are smart ways of working and there are less smart ways. When I, I could right now just use the move tool or hit the V key for move and I could switch back from the black foreground, red um, background to, to the default white and black and I could just move it over. Now even though it looks like I haven't done anything that it's leaving the background intact. The only reason the background is intact is because the white matches the white. Remember what I did a moment ago when I had red as a background. So that's one way to do it. But when I, by doing that, what if I decided later on that I wanted to select and I wanted to use the head of lettuce multiple times? I wanted to create a pattern or do something else with it. Because I'm on the same layer right now, it would be hard to select it and to make a copy of it. So what I prefer to do, and they do have you do this in this exercise, but only a little bit later, is that it's easier if you hold down the Option key and the Command key while you have the Move tool selected. And notice how the icon changes. Now you have a double arrow. You have a black arrow and a white arrow. And what that denotes is that you will be making a copy of this selection now. So I'm holding down the space bar to move this a little bit. I can also hit Command minus to zoom out a little. And now what I'm going to do is hold down the Option key, the Command key, and I'm going to move it over until I get it in place. And that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that position. I can, if I want, I can use my arrow keys to nudge it a little bit to get it close to the position that they have. And when I'm happy with it, I hit Command D for deselect. But if I decide later on that I want to move this and I have not used additional layers, which will be part of the next exercise that we'll cover on Wednesday, I am screwed. Because if I think to myself, oh, I'll just use the quick selection tool, and I select all of this, and I go, okay, I'm ready to go, and I use, go ahead and hit V for move, and I move it, Look what I've done. It cuts away that image. So if you do have multiple images on the same layer, be careful. But what this affords me now is that by making a copy of this, I also have the option if I need to use another copy of this later on that I can do that. And that's what we're going to do with this little label down here that we put over here so that you can use it multiple times. Okay, so now let's go ahead. We have the head of lettuce selected. Let's move on and use another tool. Um, and again, this may not be the best tool anymore, but it's not a bad one. Um, the one that they wanted us to use to select the um, pepper. 
is to use not the lasso tool, but the magic lasso, magnetic lasso tool. So I'm going to zoom in to get a better shot of it. Zoom nice and tight. And you'll notice there's a little, a very slight radius that goes around, or, or circle that goes around the plus sign. And that, what that's doing is it's selecting within that area. And you'll notice that within the area, it's going to select more of the yellow orange or orangish yellow colors as well as this. And it doesn't do a bad job. When I click and I drag around here now, and I can always click and release and continue to draw around here, wherever I click, it will um, add an anchor point. And if I draw around here very slowly, notice that it, what makes it different from the lasso tool is it is relatively smart and it does allow me to, um, to make a pretty decent selection from here. If you go around too quickly, it won't work and it will probably grab some of the other pixels around it. So I'm going to try to do this as best I can. Go around slowly and it's making these little anchor points around the, oh, there we go. See, I, I slipped a little bit, and it knew because of this little sampler that um, it was selecting just this range. Now, why couldn't I use the, um, anybody guess why I probably could not use the, the, uh, ma the, ma the magic wand tool for this exercise? Because the color is like the background. The background color is not absolute white. There's, there are a lot of colors going on here. Not only is there white, but there's lots of reds. There's a lot of color variation, a lot of tonal changes. So that wouldn't work for me. That's why they chose to use this one. And it doesn't do a bad job. We, can also, we also have the option with all of these selection tools is that we can refine the edge from here. If we decide that the edge is a little bit too big or too small, we can expand or contract, and we can do all of that, and we'll do more of this later with the Refine Edge button. This is new to CS3.2, and it is super. It really, really is very nice. You'll see at the bottom, there's lots of different ways that we can view this. This is the, um, the mask view. We have, this is the, just the foreground, background view. We can see it with a black background. We can see it with our selection. We can see it the normal view here, the standard view. And we can increase the radius, we can increase by contrast, we can smooth it, we can feather it, which is to soften the edge. We can expand and contract from here. So if I want to contract this by one pixel, I can. I can continue to make lots of changes. So I've made my selection. I think I'm pretty happy with it. Another way that I can, I can contract the selection, maybe by one pixel, and you might want to know when and why you would want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the Move tool and I'm going to move it over here for a second. And I'm going to hit Command H to hide. <coughs> so the, the selection is still here. I can still move this around. It just hides the marching ant so I can see a little better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here for a minute. And it actually did a pretty good job, but you'll notice I see a little bit of the white around the edge here. Does everybody see that? Just a subtle change. Well, I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my hist um, history panel, and I want to go back to the magnetic lasso tool. I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to com hit Command-H again for hide. Hide just toggles on and off. It hides and it reveals, hides, reveals. Well, what I want to do now is I want to reduce that selection by just one pixel. That's probably all it needs to cover up those white edges. And that's something that you want to pay close attention to. You don't want to see those edges. When you put photographs together, combine them, you don't, unless it's a, you know, the intent of your design to make it look like 
Um, you were a stalker or mass murderer. You know how they cut, they have in movies where they cut the pictures out of magazines and they paste together their little ransom note or something? If you want it to look like that, that's one thing. But if you don't, and you want it to look seamless, like it's all from one image, then you want to try to remove those little, those little pixels. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do, while this is selected, is I'm going to go back <coughs> again here with the selection tool, and I can select Refine Edge. And now I can refine the edge from here, and I want to con contract it by maybe 1%. Or I could come back and I could change the radius by one pixel. So anytime you need to reset this, hold down the Option key, click Reset, and we can reduce the radius maybe by... Uh, I don't want to do that either. I'm going to hold down the Reset. I'm going to go ahead and contract it by maybe a percent or two. Just one percent. Click OK takes me back and it doesn't look like much has happened and maybe nothing has happened maybe I have to do it two percent I don't know now I can go ahead and I'm gonna make a copy of it take it over put it about where they want it up here hit command H for hide close enough for right now okay so it looks like I did remove some of those pixels Definitely some over here. I could probably do it 2% and it would actually look even better. But you really don't want to see any white edges. Okay. So let's move on over here and let's um, select this tool right, let's select this one right here. Okay, so I'm going to deselect, Command D, and I'm going to zoom out so I can see the other part that I want to select. I want to select this, the olives, but I also want to select the background with it. So what you might think, I want to go ahead and use the ellipse tool. And now this is where it gets a little difficult and where you need to be able to, you know, pat, what is it, pat your head and rub your stomach at the same time. We're going to use key commands and we're going to use the mouse in order to do it. So <clears throat> what I want to do is zoom in on this area a little bit so I can get a good look at it. And with the ellipse tool selected, or the ellipse selection tool, typically you click and drag to make the ellipse. And that works okay, but notice that if you don't pick that corner just perfectly, I'm not going to be able to select the object very carefully, am I, very accurately. Well, there's a better way of doing this. I'm going to go ahead and deselect. What I can do is if I, if I hold down the Option key, that will allow me to make the selection from the middle out. And you'll notice that I'm still off a little bit, but it's a lot better than what I had before. And now if I need to move the selection, before I let go of the mouse, before I let go of the Option key, I also hold down the space bar. And that allows me to click and drag with the mouse and move this anywhere I want. Now I can center this with a mouse. I can let go of the space bar. And now I can reposition this from the center. Hold down the space bar again to reposition it just a little bit. And what I want to do is make sure that the marching ants are one pixel inside that selection so that I don't capture any of the white pixels outside it by mistake. I let go of the mouse, and look at that. Works pretty nicely. There are other ways to work. I can also go to Select, and I can select Transform Selection, and it gives me these little handles that allow me to move it up, move it down, but that really will take you much longer if you have to do that. But if you feel, if you just can't get the coordination down, using the keystrokes that I told you and the mouse at the same time, then this isn't a bad way to work. And then when you have the selection that you want and you're happy with it, in fact, I could pull that out just a little bit, but not too much. I want to make sure that it's inside there. Go ahead and hit return. 
makes my selection. I can zoom back out. And now I can make a copy of it and move it over. So I'll go ahead and hold down um, Option Command key, move it over, like so. Maybe use the arrow keys to nudge it a little bit. And I'm set here. Okay. That looks pretty good. Hit Command D for deselect, and I'm ready to move on to another shape. I could use do the salad labels, or I could use. Um, I think in the, with the. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the tomato. If I remember correctly, and I'm not sure that I do with the tomato because it's not quite an ellipse. They do use the um, the magic or the quick selection tool, and it works very nicely. So I click and drag on here, and that's very quick, very efficient. Option command to make a copy of it, drag it over, put it where it needs to be. Use the arrows if you want to nudge it down. I didn't want to do that. Let's go back. Oh, come on. I've already let go and I'm kind of screwed. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my, go back. There we go. I'm going to try this again. I'm just going to go ahead and use my move tool. Go ahead and duplicate and bring it over about like so. Matt, look at the other one. Make sure it's about the same. When I get it in position. It looks pretty good. Just Command D for deselect. <coughs> so that's probably the easiest one to do. Let's go ahead and do the carrot one. The carrot, <coughs> you could probably also use the quick selection. I can't think of too many instances now where you wouldn't want to use it. But what they want us to do now for the carrot is to use the polygon selection tool. And it's not a bad way to go sometimes. So I'll go ahead and zoom in. Get a nice tight shot of it. And you'll notice on most of these, I zoom in, I zoom back out. Zoom in, zoom back out. You'll do that a lot. <coughs> Move this up. So you can see. Select the um, polygon tool. And now what you do is you just click. And you move the mouse just a little bit, and you go around. <coughs> if you want a different way to work, let me go ahead and double click this. Deselect. What you can do is use the lasso tool. And I could start here, for example, and I could click and drag around here. And then what I can do is I can hold down the Option key. And while I have the lasso tool, by holding down the option key, it turns into the polygon lasso tool, or polygon tool. And now I can go ahead and go around the entire object. So this is a little bit more organic. And I'm going to make some mistakes, and I'm going to come back and clean it up. And I'll show you how I can clean it up in a moment. I'm trying to go around here quickly. And I want you guys to do a nice clean job of this. But you'll notice that I'm missing parts of the, can of the um, carrot here. And that's OK. I can always, if I try to undo and start over again, it will take me forever. Trying to go along here and select it. And what I may have to do to make a decent selection of this is to come back and to refine the selection. And again, make it bigger, smaller, that sort of thing. This is really a crude way to work these days, but it's just to let you know that this tool is still here. They generally don't remove tools um, more than anything they add. 
and also as a reminder how this all of these tools work is that you go around clockwise or counterclockwise and when you reach the point where you start you should see a little circle in the lower corner of the icon and it will let you know that you have completed it and then you can let go and you make your selection but you'll now you'll notice that I've missed some parts or maybe I've I want to add or subtract from it notice it doesn't look too clean <coughs> I'm going to cheat. I'm going to show you how to make the corrections, and then I'm going to delete it, and then we're going to use the quick selection tool, which is a better way to go. But if you didn't have access to that, you still had an older version of, of Photoshop, that you, that's what you would have to do. I can go ahead and use the lasso tool, and I can add to this selection, or I can subtract from this selection. Remember how I subtracted the white pixels by holding down the Option key? Well, I can add to the selection by holding down the Shift key. So with, and I can use any of these tools that I want. I'm going to hold down the shift key, leaving the lasso tool selected. I'm going to start inside and begin to click and drag along the edge, select those pixels, and then drag around. And notice how it adds to the selection. Do the same thing over here. I'm going to move over here, click starting inside, drag around pretty tightly, and then I can freely come inside, come back around and make a full circle, and notice I've added to those, those uh, added to that selection. I'm going to do the same thing here, and just add, and it's not doing too bad. Hold down the space bar to move it. Hold down the shift key to add. I'm adding by holding down the shift key using the same tool in this particular instance. Notice how it's adding to the selection. Hold down the shift key. Adding to the selection here. Notice how I missed that little bump. Come back in and I'm add. Now, if I needed to subtract from the selection, if I go like this, and I go, oh man, I really goofed. You can either Command Z or Undo, or you can hold down the Option key. And remember, I can click and drag, starting from the outside, and click along here. And come back out, and I can remove those pixels. So shift key adds, option key removes from an existing selection. So you have to go all the way around. Go, you know, in orderly fashion, clockwise, counterclockwise, do that. Um, what I'm going to do is cheat, and I'm going to deselect, and I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to use the quick selection tool. Now, I recommend that you see how much better and quicker it is. And I still might want to come back, and I can use the left bracket key <coughs> to reduce. And I can hold down the shift key and zoom in here, make a nice quick selection in here. And I still have to do some cleanup. So I still might have to use the, the lasso tool because it's not doing a really clean job. And hold down the shift key, and I can come in here, and I can add this little selection. And while this may look insignificant, um, you'll be able to see that there are, that you'll be able to detect probably within a, a, a couple of pixels. See, it didn't do a perfect job. So I can try to go back and use a quick selection tool. And I can make it smaller by hitting the left bracket key, hold down the Option key and click on there and see how it is allowing me to drag and reduce some of these, but it's not doing a perfect job. So this, it's not the perfect tool. Okay, So I can always come back here and I can remove pixels, hold down the Option key to remove from the selection, hold down the Shift key to add to the selection, 
and we can continue to go around and refine it. And so that tool wasn't perfect. I'm going to go ahead and as good as the job it did, it was quicker. I'm going to go ahead and have to remove some of those pixels. And yet there are will there will be other ways of selecting this as well. This is just the tip of the iceberg of ways of selecting. And that looks pretty good. Zoom out and I have my selection. Go ahead and hit Option Command to move it. And you'll notice it's not facing the way I want it. So I need to be able to rotate it. I can also resize it on the fly. If you have to resize it, um, I, it would be okay to reduce it a little bit in size or enlarge it a little bit, but not a lot. If you enlarge it too much or you reduce it too much, it will get blurred, it will get pixelated, and it's not going to look good at all. To rotate this or to resize it on the fly before you've deselected, hit Command T or go to Edit, Free Transform. <clears throat> You'll notice this little box appears around it. When you move around the corner, it allows us to rotate and then to click and drag and to move this on the fly. So let me compare this with the other one. Actually, it wants us to rotate this quite a bit. Let's zoom out. That looks pretty good. Move this over just a little bit. So that allows us to take an object select it, transform it, move it, resize it if we want. And that's what we're going to do with the next part. And then we're, we're pretty much done. Go ahead and return, hit the return key or double click inside. And that removes the transform. Then I'm left with the selection. Then I hit Command D to deselect. Now we're going to select the, the, um, the label and duplicate it several times as they have done here. You'll also notice that they have hit Command I for invert. What that means is all it's doing is that you'll notice that this is sort of a, a reddish pink. When it says invert, it takes the opposite colors on the color wheel and swaps it. If I had a white image, it would turn black. If I had a black image, it would turn white. If I had a yellow image, it would turn purple. It just does the opposite on the color wheel. So whatever the complement is. So again, to select it, <coughs> I want to zoom in to get a nice clean view of it. I'm going to use a similar technique that I did for the other. I'm going to select the ellipse tool. This time it's a little different. Notice that it's a perfect circle. So now it requires even holding down an additional key. I hold down the option key to select from the center, but notice that I make an ellipse. I want it to be a perfect circle. To be a perfect circle, to constrain the proportions, I hold down the shift key and now I notice that it is just that, a perfect circle. I have not let go of the mouse yet. And notice that it is not quite centered. So what I need to do is also hold down the space bar, move the selection, let go of the space bar, move it in so it's about one pixel inside, let go, and I should have it. Now I'm ready to zoom back out. Hold down Option Command, move it. <coughs> We're going to move it in place up here. Let's see where they have it. That's about right. Like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit Command I for invert or go to Image Adjustments and we have Invert down here. Notice it turns to green. And now we're ready to make a copy of it and transform it and do what, just what they've done here. So I hold down the Option, Command key, make a copy of it. And as soon as I do that, it fixes the other one in space. Now I can go ahead and hit Command T for transform. And I can hold down the Shift key to make sure that it is that it constrains the proportions.
place it where I want it. And then when I'm done, double click or hit the return key. Now this one I can still move, hold down the Option Command key so that I duplicate that one more time. Hit Command T for transform. If I want it to transform from the center outward and I want to make sure that the proportions are constrained, hold down the Option Shift key when I'm dragging over it and notice that it enlarges it from the center and it keeps the it, it, a perfect circle. I can move it in place. Not quite the way the, they have it here, but that's okay. Hit the return key. And I have it. Deselect, and I'm almost done. The last thing that they want us to do in this exercise is they want us to get rid of all the other junk. We don't need this stuff anymore. We want to be left with just our final composition. And for that, what we use is the crop tool. The crop tool allows you to take any photograph and eliminate pixels that you don't want from it. But they, ha they can only be around the edges. Um, you have to always select a rectangle. So if I select a rectangle like so, I can resize it and I can move this. Notice the part that grays out. That will be the part that is cut away. What I want you to make note of is that how different the file size will be when you're done. Right now, you'll notice that it's 19 megabytes. It's a big file, pretty big file. Watch what happens as soon as I hit I double click inside or I hit the return key because I'm, excuse me, get rid of, getting rid of all of these pixels out here. As soon as I hit return, now look at it, 9 megabytes. It got rid of 10 megabytes. That's a lot. That's a lot, a lot. Now I'm finished with my final product. So <clears throat> in the future, when you're doing your own, you will probably not have all of the elements on, on one file as you see it here. They will be you'll probably have a half a dozen files open. And what we'll do, and you, we'll see, I hope when they get CS4 installed, is because that they've switched to tabbed, a tabbed approach. We'll be able to take elements from each and click and drag them and pop them on each one. You can do that now. For example, if I were to come back to this, let's hide this for the time being. If I wanted to combine one image with another, I could take this entire image and combine it with the other image. I can go ahead and I can select this one and select Command A, so the whole thing is selected. Or I could select only a part of it. So for example, what if I wanted to take only the head of lettuce and combine it with this image over here? What I could do is we noted we could probably take the quick selection tool, select the head of lettuce. Need to hold down the shift key. There we go. So I have it selected. Select the move tool. And I click from one and I drag to the other. When I do that, it looks like I've moved it. As soon as I release it onto the new file, all it does is it makes a copy of it. So the one that I've taken from the old one is replaced. So now notice I have another one now. And they cheated on this one too. Because if I look back and I look over here to layers, they've separated this into layers. <coughs> and you're not supposed to use layers on this exercise. But they did. And you'll notice that this one is selected and I can move it up so that it's at the top. Now, when we use layers, it will be really, really nice. I don't want you to use layers on this exercise, even if it tells you to do so. What I want you to do is to practice making selections, moving the objects, being pretty sure of what you're doing, and then deselecting. Now, it's only for this exercise. But in the future, from, from here on out, from this, this point on, when you're you know, moving 
and combining files, um, you will always use layers. That will be your protection against accidentally deselecting and having to reselect and then when you move it, seeing that, that unsightly background and having it cut away. Having elements on separate layers protects you so that it protects each element, allows them to um, be manipulated independent of one another and yet when you look at the entire image, it works as a whole, as, an as a single element. Okay. <coughs> So that's <coughs> a pretty good way of using a diverse um, group of selections um, to combine disparate group of elements into one single composition. Because that really, I won't say it's the core of this class, but you will be doing this a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. You will be taking individual elements from one photograph and combining it with another or you will want to make a selection as we did in the first couple of exercises and protect an area or um, you'll want to affect only a specific area and by making selections that will allow you to do that. And there are tons of tools now that will enable you to make selections. Some work better, you know it's like having a bunch of different kinds of saws. You know, I like using, <coughs> in my 3D modeling class, I like using the analogy of a, of a wood shop. It wouldn't be any different. Think of it in a wood shop. You could have um, a table saw, a radial arm saw, you could have a band saw, you could have, um, what are some other saws? You could have um, a keyhole saw, isn't that another one? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of saws. Each one cuts wood or whatever material you're cutting a little bit differently than another. You know, the table saw is meant for cutting really precise big pieces of wood across. If you need to cut in, in a really intricate pattern, maybe the keyhole saw or kind of a scroll saw would work better. If you're going to make loose organic kinds of cuts, then maybe the band saw would be a better way to go. Um, there are just a whole bunch of tools. Well, that's what they're introducing to you in here. They all cut, they all do the same thing, but you know, depending on what it is that you're cutting, some work better than others so, you know, for a specific purpose. Does that make sense? That's all I wanted to cover today, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off my video recorder. I hope to have it up by tonight or tomorrow if um, you need a review. Now would be a good time to take a break and then come back and, and work on this exercise. If you didn't finish the other exercises, go back and, and complete them and then come up to this one. By the end of this week, we'll have done quite a few exercises, maybe four or five. And when you're done with a group of them, um, have me check them off. Just open them up. Let me see them on your monitor. You don't have to print them out or anything. And then I will check them off so that we'll get them all done. Okay, any questions? Anything that you want me to cover or redo? Okay, yeah. The carrot? You have to have the selection first. So first you need to make a selection. So let me come back. I'm going to come back here for a minute and deselect. And I'm going to go back a minute so that I have the image before I cropped it. So... Let's click here. Let's bring this one up. Let's go back to crop. Okay, so I'm going to go zoom in and I'm going to select the carrot from down here. And I'm not I'm just going to use a crude selection using the quick selection tool. And the first thing that you need to do is to move it. So you need the move tool selected. Um, hold down Option Command to make a copy of it. And now you can either go up to the Edit menu and select Free Transform, or you can hit Command T. Because you will use this feature quite a bit, Command T is Command is the Apple key. Apple T, you will be using that a lot. Just hit Apple T. <coughs> Notice it brings up a little box around it, and when you move the cursor, 
just outside one of the corners and notice that it changes and you see a little curved double arrow. And then when you click and you drag, that allows you to rotate it. Okay, and if you want to scale it, you move over one of the corners, hold down the shift key. And the reason I say that is because you probably want to constrain the proportions because if you don't, I can make a real thin carrot, can I? Or I can make a real, un let's undo that and let's make a real squatty one if you're not careful. And that exaggerates. And for carrots, it doesn't matter because a carrot looks like a carrot looks like a carrot. But if you start doing that with photographs of people, it looks bizarre when you stretch them or you make them squatty looking in proportions when they change dramatically. Unless it's intentional, it's a, it's a part of the aesthetic, it's part of the design intent. So the shift key will be your friend in order to constrain proportions when you scale, when you do a lot of things. It will be really important. And that, you can't go wrong. And that's, that's the same tool or the same keystroke you use for a number of applications. If I were making an, a, a shape in Illustrator um, and I wanted to make sure it's a perfect circle or a perfect square, you hold down the shift key. And that same deal. Okie doke. Let me turn off the video recorder and then I'll be um, happy to help any of you.